Hi everyone, we're going to be doing some urban sketching at the beach, one of my favorite little beaches called Water's Edge. So I actually got a bit carried away and <laughs> just started my pen work um, pretty soon without recording it. So here's the sketch that I have done of the uh, view in front of me. And then before I started recording this, I had already put in some color and uh, the colors that you see in the water, that was a mixture of uh, viridian and ultramarine blue. So you don't necessarily need like a type of turquoise in your, your palette. And now I'm just adding a little bit of color to the sand and adding that color into the, um, the water's edge as well. So you have that sort of feeling of the transparency of the, the clear water that we have there. And the, the color of the sand, I've used a, a quinacridone gold and um, just mixing up a little bit of shadow to add to the, uh, to the bottom of the trees and maybe a bit of shadow to the trees. On the path over there, there was uh, a, quite a strong shadow. So just putting some of that in. And those little steps, that's where we come down to, to come down to the beach. And uh, a friend and I often go snorkeling here and it is the most wonderful place to do a bit of snorkeling on a calm day like today. For the rocks I've used mainly um, burnt sienna and a quinacridone gold and this is the end result of the watercolour and now for a bit of live commentary from the beach. I want to now carry on with some writing here, I just want to have done in pencil Water's Edge which is the name of this little beach. But you'll see if I I've got this on my lap, so if I press on it, it sort of does that. So what I've got is, I've just got um, one of these boards that um, I've, I've extended and if you like with a piece of um, duct tape, just so that it, I've cut it there so that it fits in my bag. But if I put this and I take my clip, the board to the, um, the book you can see it's it's really stiff now so I can also hold it up that's the view I was painting and um, it's nice and stiff on my lap and now I've got here just a calligraphy pen a number two and um, going to be just filling it filling this in it's it's a nice sort of it's a waterproof felt tip and the reason I do the writing beforehand is just to get it nice and neat did sort of um, draw a line with the with the ruler I think every time I do lettering, I do a different design, <laughs> sort of trying different things out. And I can't tell you how wonderful it is to sit here and listen to the, the waves breaking. This is normally where a friend and I go snorkeling. And although this is a winter's day, but you can see it's glorious weather for a winter's day, it's a winter's day, so the water is icy cold. And she can't make the snorkeling today, so I decided I'd rather just come and do some sketching. The water, I guess, I don't know how cold it is, maybe hmm, 12 degrees, something like that. But outside today, it's... Um, 16 to 17 degrees but sitting here in the sun 
is absolutely glorious. So you can see I put shorts on, gorgeous day, there were some people swimming and uh, such a pleasure to do plein air painting on a day like today. I then went to stretch my legs, found some lovely little treasures on the beach and selected a few to, uh, to add to my sketchbook page. So I decided to paint in the, the shadows of the shelves first and here I've used a mixture of alizarin and uh, ultramarine blue so it just makes a really nice sort of purpley colour. Maybe it looks a bit strong now but at the end of the day when you see the full picture and of course always remembering that watercolour dries lighter um, it will be the correct colour. Uh, some burnt sienna to the tips of the shells and then a type of Payne's grey for the bluey grey colour that you see in the muscle and the little top shell. So just having a little bit of fun playing around it doesn't have to be exact at the end of the day you'll get the idea that there were some shells. And now for the challenging bit, I've decided to add this house to my sketchbook page and uh, the house is actually called Water's Edge House, it's right on the beach and I did the drawing on the beach and uh, I, I didn't have time to carry on with the pen and ink and the watercolour. So I am showing you this bit in my, in my studio. So I'm using a, a fountain pen called a Twisby Go. It's got uh, a lovely uh, sort of section where you suck up the paint, uh, suck up the, the ink, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful pen. So I'm using the medium nib, and I've just sped it up here a little bit because drawing this whole thing over in pen, having your watch could be a little bit tedious. So I just want to get some stronger lines and then come in with some watercolor washes. Again, my burnt sienna for the color of the house and I've mixed some quinacridone gold. And I did wet the area first before I put the paint down just so that it flows a little bit better and when I put the dark, darker sections on it, uh, which is a touch of Payne's Grey added to the burnt sienna, that it flows nicely. The roof itself is a touch of Payne's Grey with uh, ultramarine blue, just to get that nice um, grayish sort of reflected roof color and then this porch was in deep shadow so you can't really see what's going on in there in the strong light even from where I was sitting on the beach I could not see what was going on inside there so just an idea that there are some shapes and different things uh, I have decided to to keep it that nice dark color it has like a big arch at the bottom of the house. It must be some kind of entry point and uh, another living space at, at the bottom. And this gorgeous little picket fence. So it doesn't have to be absolutely exact. This is just an idea of colors. Uh, if you look back on my day at the beach, you know, it's just a a great memory to put things like this together in in a journal. I am actually using my moleskin um, watercolor book. It's an A4, so it's a very nice size. It doesn't get too cramped or too small. Uh, if you're using a, a uh, if you're using an A5, then uh, it might get a little bit too small for the amount of things that I have added here. So just a bit of bushes at the bottom with a sap green and a touch of ultramarine blue just to make it slightly darker. 
and then the uh, burnt sienna again um, a hint of the beach and the rocks below you'll see the lighthouse on the on the right that uh, is called roman roman rock lighthouse it is actually the only lighthouse that is built on a rock in south africa and i can actually see it from my house as well so just from a different angle but i could see this lighthouse in the distance so i've decided to to add it to my um, my page a bit of weight at the bottom a little bit of dark just to give the whole painting uh, a bit of weight at the bottom of the house there you can see also the shells turned out um, you can hardly see the sort of purple color it just looks like a nice sort of dark shadow area there And lastly, I come in with some writing. I have decided to write a bit of a history of the lighthouse here that was built uh, in, I think, 1861. And this just helps you remember where you were, when it was, a uh, bit of uh, just things about the day. And it's a great memory for later on when you page through your sketchbooks. And it just adds a little bit of character to the whole page. So I hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for joining me uh, in another video and I will be doing more of these plein air videos and so let me know if you've enjoyed it.